Now, this is a treat. If we sleep in May, do we go over potential June head coaching vacancies in this month? Because this is June, live right here on this Wednesday with John Rostey. Joining us once again on behalf of FanDuel, live right here on the early line. And of course, John, we have to look back on the week that was in the carousel in Connecticut around Dan Hurley, who stays in stores. What it means for UConn and Dan Hurley's legacy moving forward. We do all of that here in June, but first we say welcome back to the early line. We're glad to have you. Great to be with you, Ben. Always great to be talking college hoops with you and your esteemed crew. And mm. that is what happens here in the month of June. So let's go through the Dan Hurley timeline because, John, it really came out of left field a week ago yeah. Thursday morning. Ahead of game one of the 2024 NBA Finals, ESPN's Adrian Rojanowski reported the Lakers were targeting Dan Hurley as their next head coach. Dan Hurley goes to Los Angeles to meet with the Lakers the following day and then over the weekend molds his decision. And then a couple of days ago on Tuesday or on, excuse me, Monday afternoon, we got that final determination that Dan Hurley was not going to go to Los Angeles, rejecting the Lakers offer and would remain as UConn's head coach. Let's start with the timeline here, John. Do you believe in everything that you have heard around this situation? Dan Hurley was seriously considering the Lakers position. He wouldn't have went to Los Angeles if he wasn't considering the Lakers position. And as you know, and it's been well documented, Dan Hurley met in person with the Lakers late last week and then returned to the East Coast. But there's a lot of reasons why Dan Hurley opted to remain at the University of Connecticut. A big one is the geographic portion of this. In my opinion, if the Knicks or the Celtics courted Dan Hurley to be its next head basketball coach. I think the result of this could have been different, but ultimately the chance to go back to Connecticut, a place that Dan Hurley has reinvigorated under his watch and brought the Huskies back to a level that we saw under Jim Calhoun, that decision obviously usurped the ability to go cross country and be the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. John, if we're taking a look at maybe that step from college into the pros, was this something that maybe the Hurley camp was putting out for feelers in the NBA or just really caught him off guard and intrigued him when the Lakers made that first phone call? Dan Hurley has been open about his desire to coach in the NBA, although with conversations that I've had with Dan Hurley, even some in the last couple of days after he made his decision, he initially thought that was going to be down the road. And again, I stand by what I said. If this was the Knicks, if this was the Celtics, if this was in a different geographic region, I think the result of this could have been different. But there's also the allure of chasing history next season at Connecticut. And there's also something that we yeah. have to keep in mind, guys. And this, this is something that isn't as pronounced in this transfer portal error. Dan Hurley is a very loyal person, especially when it comes to his players. And there are several players at UConn that he has coached now for multiple seasons that have been a part of teams that have won back-to-back -back national championships. Asan Diara, Alex Caravan, Samson Johnson. He knows he owes it to those players who committed to him to see this thing through, especially when this courtship started in early June. So, John, the best coach currently in college basketball remains in college basketball for UConn, for the sport as a whole. What does it mean that Dan Hurley is staying in stores? It's tremendous, and it's a major storyline now, obviously going into next season, that UConn, again, a team that lost – several key ingredients again from a team that was dominant in its run to a national championship will be going for a three-peat in 24-25. You know, Ben, I understand fully what's going on off the field, off the court in college athletics, and I know how volatile it is. But you look right now here on June 12th about what lies ahead next season. UConn is going for a three-peat in men's basketball. We also have Alabama bringing back Mark Sears, adding Cliff Amore, trying to go back to the Final Four for the second consecutive year under Nate Oates. You also have to look at Duke bringing in a generational talent potentially in freshman forward Cooper Flagg. And on top of that, we have teams of high ilk in different conferences. UCLA, Oregon, USC, and Washington are going to the Big Ten. The Big 12 could potentially have five 
teams in the preseason top 10. Kansas, Houston, Iowa State, Baylor, and Arizona. I know how volatile things are off the court and off the field in college sports, but the on-court product in college basketball is extremely, extremely healthy. It's going to be fun to watch UConn next year. And the reason I bring that up is Dan Hurley, six seasons, 141 wins at UConn, back-to-back national championships going for a third. We know he is very loyal to that university. Did any of those conversations or talks come up between you and him where it's like, you know what, if I did go to the Lakers, that 30-day portal opens up, and who knows what sort of team that we would be fielding at UConn for the upcoming season. Now, crisis averted at that point, but that had to be a big thing that was sort of drawing him back to UConn. It was definitely part of it, Donnie, but also we have to look at this, too. When a college coach is going to entertain an NBA opportunity, if you're in an opportunity like Dan Hurley, where you have won and rebuilt UConn's program, again, to the level that it was under Jim Calhoun, you want to take an opportunity in the NBA if you're going to exercise that, you know, demon, or demon might be the wrong word, but if you want to exercise that right to go coach in the NBA, I think you want to go into a situation where you know you're going to win and have success. I am not one of these people who covers college basketball all year long and then jumps in the next like I have a working knowledge of every NBA roster. But from the people I've talked to, you know, were in the NBA over the last week, they've told me that the Lakers are not exactly a ready-made championship team with obviously the history, yeah. you know, of LeBron James potentially maybe, you know, retiring near the age of 40. I think that's something to really keep in mind right now. If a college coach is going to leave a tailor-made situation for success and go to the NBA, he's got to be in a situation where obviously he's set up to win. Yeah, John, some of the reporting around the Lakers situation and their ownership group, there is the prestige of Los Angeles. There is the luster of this Lakers organization based on its history, but current day maybe not as attractive of a head coaching position as some maybe originally thought. So let's focus on the college basketball perspective of this all. Connecticut trying to win a third consecutive national championship will enter next year as of this moment as a co-favorite to cut down the nets in early April. Once again, a 10 to 1 price for UConn alongside the Kansas Jayhawks. It is a tournament known as madness that ends with a crowning of a national champion so john is it realistic to expect the connecticut huskies to contend for a third straight title i think uconn's preseason ranking this year after losing four starters newton spencer steph castle donovan Klingon from last year's team that went 37-3 is based more on what this program has done in the last two seasons than what the team looks like entering next year but i will say this you look at those in greece right now in stores connecticut and you're thinking about the meal that could be sampled you say what I don't know if the sauce is going to taste as good as it's been the last couple of years, but then you remember who the chef is, and the chef is Dan Hurley. Mm. And remember this, UConn does not have to be as dominant as it was in each of the past two seasons to win a national championship because UConn in the last two seasons under Dan Hurley won 12 NCAA tournament games by an average of 21.7 points per game. I'm not saying that UConn is, you know, one of the best teams, again, of all time. But I'll say this. You have to put them in the conversation among the best teams of all time when you look at different errors and so on and so forth because of how dominant this team was. It's definitely the one of the best teams of the modern era in college basketball. And, again, I think you have to put it in the conversation. It's one of the best teams of all time, considering what this program has done under Dan Hurley in the past two years. Listen, this was a treat. This is June with John Rothstein live right here on the early line. John, we appreciate the time as always.